Is the West getting tired of Ukraine? No, not really. I don't think so. I found this really cool argument the other day as I was uh, Twittering. You know, there's like people like Americans. There's Americans that argue, why are we sending money to Ukraine? We need to help our veterans and our homeless people. What are we doing? And uh, my biggest argument against it will always do to your defense budget. It's like 1.2 trillion or some or 700 million. And like 50 million of that go to Ukraine. As the war in Ukraine Republican enters said its second year with no resolution. People or Both Western yeah, people and always. Ukrainian politicians yeah. are getting increasingly anxious about the prospect of Ukraine fatigue. A couple of months ago, I don't feel Ukraine foreign minister fatigue. told the New York Times that... Sure, obviously, like regular Joes, we don't watch the news that much anymore, right? Like in the beginning of the war in February, nobody really informs themselves every single day anymore. But I, I've, I personally, and I, the German news and stuff, and... I don't think there's a Ukraine fatigue. Led. The media's interest is going down, and this is also affecting the public, and the public is affecting the politicians. And Zelensky himself acknowledged this in June, when he admitted that the fatigue is growing and people want some kind of outcome, but warned that this is all part of Putin's attritional yeah. strategy like to wear down Russia the want. West. Western politicians are clearly wary of straining their public's patience. But if Russia captures this new equipment, they can now reverse engineer it. I think you've way too much credit to Russia, man. I think the last uh, year has shown uh, that Russia isn't that big bad bear that everybody dreams of that is reverse engineering American equipment and then flying uh, laser rockets to the moon. I, I don't know about that, bro. I know about that. Both Macron and Biden apparently told Zelensky privately that Ukraine might have they to seek territory economy. <laughs> to accelerate the war's conclusion. And a few politicians, most notably the so-called Freedom Caucus of Republicans in the US House of Representatives, have explicitly questioned whether the West is doing the right thing in supporting Ukraine. Kind of so in this video, we that thought we'd so take fuck, a look at man. whether Ukraine fatigue is a real phenomenon. Whether Western support for Ukraine is actually waning. Imagine how sad it will be that the, the West is abandoning Ukraine. Ukraine just falls apart. It's ridiculous, man. Uh, Stoltenberg said a beautiful thing. He's kind of talking about if we if Ukraine falls, we make uh, we, we show authoritarian regimes around the world that they can do whatever we want. Is Ukraine fatigue real? Well, the short answer, at least yeah, in funny. Europe, is no, not really. Polling actually suggests that European support for Ukraine is relatively stable. Polling by Ipsos found that the fraction Clear of Britain's are supportive of sending Britain army sending and help to Ukraine, Ukraine implementing economic sanctions against Russia. Britain sending return aid to Ukraine such as food. 47% Britain sending money to help Ukraine in their fight against Russia. I mean, 80% is still very low. Yet yeah, the, the Brits are content. very much for this stuff, man. The Brits are doing a very good job. Is pretty much stable Ukraine, at about sixty percent, and while support years, for Carlson's sanctions member, decreased in October, as that's the one I think. Yeah. Yes, it is extremely important. I'll and yeah, this clip is really uh, when you have arguments and debates against people that are anti-Ukraine and we shouldn't support Ukraine anymore. I think this clip is just summing up perfectly, man. Yes, it is extremely important uh, that we as politicians make sure that our countries provide support to Ukraine. And, and not only provide support to Ukraine, but provide substantial support to Ukraine for a long time. Where's Stoltenberg from? What country and is that he? that will have a price. From? Uh, part the price, the sanctions are important, but also, of course, the, the military support, but also the military support, the economic support. No way. The price. But the price of not supporting them is much higher. Partly because, for me, this is a moral issue. This is about a sovereign, independent nation with more than 40, 000, uh, 40 million people living in Europe which is brutally attacked by a big power, Russia. End if of we don't story. react to that, and after we have seen what happened in Budja and other places, it, it violates my understanding of, what to say, decent behavior of neighbors and friends of Ukraine. So, and, so, the, so, so of course, yes, it has a price. Yes. But, 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 but not to act and just let that brutality continue and let that bruta brutality, brutality of Russia be awarded is for me a higher price. How can you disagree Second, with that? I, I don't get it. It is our you know? interest to help Ukraine. <clears throat> because you have to understand that if Ukraine loses this, that's a danger for us. That will make Thank Europe you, even team. more vulnerable for Russian uh, aggression. Because then the lesson learned from Georgia in 2008, from annexing Crimea in 2014, from starting to undermine Donbass in 2014, and then the full-fledged brutal invasion by President Putin in February, is that they can just use force. They get their will. 
It's to re-establish an idea of spheres of influence, where big powers can decide what smaller neighbors can do. And that will make all of us more vulnerable. So even if you don't care about the moral aspect of this, supporting the people of, of Ukraine, you should care about your own security interest. So therefore, you have to pay. Pay for the support, pay for the humanitarian aid, pay uh, the consequences of the economic sanctions, video. because the alternative is to pay a much higher price. Sometimes I think this kind of content is too high for some people. And then and remember one thing. Yes, we pay a price. But the price we pay as the European Union, as NATO, is a price we can measure in currency, in money. The price they pay is measured in lives, lost every day. So we, we should just stop complaining and step up and provide support, full stop. And I, I personally see this completely as my opinion. I don't know how you can be against that. That seems ridiculous. And I think that's the only standpoint a real Western Democrat that loves moral and freedom has to stand on. End of story, man. Fears about rising energy prices kicked in. That's it's like an end still of story statement. It was in February. Polling by ZDF in Germany from September found that support for Ukraine amongst Germans has actually increased, with 74% in favor what of these 20 aid doing? to you. Like, what are you doing, man? You, you utterly. These people have been just propagandized by Russian trolls on Facebook for fucking 10 years. Ukraine compared to 71% in August and 70% in July. Similarly, a massive Eurobarometer poll of 27,000 EU citizens from November found that 74% approved of EU support for Ukraine, sad. including majorities of over 90% in Portugal, Ireland, Denmark, the Netherlands, Sweden and mm. Finland. Now, there are exceptions. That same Eurobarometer poll found that less than half of Bulgarians, Cypriots, Slovakians and Greeks were in favour of EU support for Ukraine. But for the most part, support for Ukraine has remained steady and large oh, majorities in most European Total countries. Approval. The problem is I, I, I often, I, I, I know me guys, I'm a guy that believes that human beings are fucking retarded and shouldn't really have too many decisions. Mm. That's why important questions like the support of Ukraine should be in the hands of people with a brain. And um, it's, it's, it's ridiculous to see something like that. Like, what is wrong with Bulgaria, man? Germany this far down is so sad, bro. That is very, very, very sad. He's in most European countries want their want governments to, to continue support. This is probably why most European politicians are still firmly in favor of supporting Ukraine. Since it was reported that he was pressuring Zelensky into territorial concessions, Macron has publicly declared full support for Ukraine's territorial integrity. And last week, the Elysee announced that France would be sending armored vehicles to the country. Those the promise is so democratic politics work right these politicians like macron and Scholz, etc they they need to win elections who can blame them they need to win elections and they realize whatever is trendy right now they need to be done and right now it's trendy to support ukraine if fifth if 60 percent of a country like germany or france will say fuck ukraine they suck the politicians will probably then not support ukraine anymore because they want to win elections man <clears throat> and they're actually i think i'm wrong there this is where you see the power of the public the power of the people because uh, what the people want is what the politicians in the end have to give a fuck about, right? Politicians that have come out lucky against still, most Ukraine people are have usually Ukraine. been punished at the ballot box. The Five Star Movement in Italy, for example, brought down the Draghi government because of a wing of the party opposed arms shipments to Ukraine, but lost badly to the right-wing coalition led by Georgia Maloney's FDI, who was staunchly pro-NATO and pro-Ukraine. However, while Ukraine fatigue hasn't hit Europe, in the US things are a bit more complicated. And it's also a geopolitical thing, right? Ameri you Americans are just further away. You sit on another continent and you're like, what the fuck do I care about Ukraine? But when you're close to this stuff, it feels deeper. When you like to 10 hours flying away, there's a real war with rockets and shit and fucking civilians getting killed in their sleep. It feels a bit more real, man. While polling suggests that about two thirds What's of Americans are still in favor of supporting Ukraine, enthusiasm among Republicans is the problem. For Republicans, is most of them don't you can't even point where Ukraine is on the map. Apparently waning. Polling by the Chicago Council on Global Affairs from December, for example, found that 75% of Americans were in favor of increasing sanctions on Russia. 
65% were in favour of sending military aid, 66% were in favour of sending economic aid, and 73% were in favour of accepting Ukrainian threats, refugees. When they first asked this question back Promise in March, the Republicans there was basically Putin's no difference between Syria. Democrats and Republicans. I mean, Putin gave Trump the At election, the time, right? for example, 83% of Democrats and 80% of Republicans supported military aid, and 85% of Democrats and 74% of Republicans supported economic aid. However, in the nine months since, a partisan divide has appeared, with only 50% of Republicans in support of economic aid to Ukraine, compared to 81% of Democrats, and only 55% in support of military aid, compared to 76% of Democrats. Republicans now have less patience for a protracted conflict. 46% think the US should lobby Ukraine for a peace settlement as soon as possible. That is crazy. Even if that means that is, ceding that, that scares me. That's something, I'm, really, uh, I'm a guy that isn't scared often, man, but imagine that would really happen. Imagine a Republican like this, what is, DeSantis wins the election and pressures Zelensky to make territorial concessions to to. To Putin. Dude, I'm a guy that doesn't get hurt often, man. I don't care that much anymore about the world, but that will hit me deep. That will really take all, all the hope from me, dude. If that will ever happen, I hope it never happens, uh, that will really hit me. Compared that to 29% of Democrats. Similarly, Democrats are far Just more willing to suffer happens, costs dude. for Ukraine. 69% of Democrats think the US should support Ukraine for as long as it takes, even if that means higher prices, compared to 50% of Republicans. Just for that, I will just just for that, man. Polling elsewhere has found similar results. The Wall Street the Journal and Pew Putin's Polling gas station have found that the fraction of Republicans Soviet who think the US is doing too much for Ukraine <laughs> has risen from 6% <laughs> in March to 48% today. A YouGov CBS News poll from just a few days ago found that... Again, I, it's, I don't want to sound like an asshole, man, but the problem with polls like this is, to me, that most people are idiots. Polls are idiotic. I mean, look at polls in politics nowadays. Look at the Trump versus Hillary Clinton polls. It's all fucking bullshit. Human beings are massively manipulatable. I think these numbers represent nothing. Uh, what the media tells them to think, that's what they mostly think, like normal people. For the first time since the I don't like began, these numbers. a majority of Republicans random. now oppose aid to Ukraine. Now, it's important not to overstate this. A majority of Americans still support sending aid to Ukraine. And while some House Republicans have come out against Ukraine, they're in the minority. Most Republican Congress people are broadly How in favor of Ukraine. America, man, and the people that saved the world from the Nazis. Candidate, freedom loving nation also pro that thinks they created fed democracy badly freedom, at the midterms. Man. It's also worth saying that the Say vast majority of Democrat uh, voters and Ukraine, politicians then. still support aid Marshall to enough. Ukraine, which means that aid will probably continue to flow until at least 2024. Biden has just announced the US's largest support package yet, including Bradley armored vehicles, I and like the shit. US Army is about to start training Ukrainians to use their Patriot air defense systems. Even if Republicans win in 2024, halting support is probably not a good idea, because while America Americans don't like a protracted war, they like losing even less. This is what happened in both Iraq and Afghanistan. A majority of Americans favor well, the draw, but both they Obama can and test the Biden equipment down there. were widely criticized when the Islamic State and the Taliban respectively took over. Fuck, it's also worth bro. saying that stick, as America's bro. economic Go away, prospects improve coming. and inflation <laughs> subsides, <laughs> Americans might become a bit more relaxed about sending aid to Ukraine. This is also true in Europe. A warm America winter and falling world, oil Europe. and gas prices have made Europeans more pro-Ukraine because, well, supporting Ukraine no longer requires Europeans to freeze this winter. Nonetheless, the fact that Ukraine is becoming a partisan issue in America should worry Kiev because if there's one thing Republicans are good at, it's obstructionism. It's also bad news for anyone who cares about the functioning of America's political system. The fact that everything, including Ukraine, eventually becomes a partisan issue doesn't bode well for American democracy. So what should pro-Ukraine politicians do about this? Well, the main thing is to make sure Ukraine has the upper hand. People are more likely to support Ukraine if they think Ukraine is winning, and polling bears this out. Polling sad? by the Chicago so Center for Global Affairs found that a 71% majority of Americans who think Ukraine has an advantage think they should support Ukraine for as long as it takes, while a 60% majority... It's human psychology, right? Whatever happens in Russia and Ukraine, you always want to be in the winner's side. Because you just want to be like, oh, I, I won that, I won that. I, I knew who was going to win that. It's like you're watching football, right? 
Hey, son, I think this team is going to win. And then they went, oh, I told you, man. I, I fucking told you. Look at my big dick. Those who think Russia has the advantage <laughs> want the US to pressure Ukraine to settle for peace. To be clear, we're not suggesting the West just give Ukraine every weapon system it asks for, and it's important not to be dismissive of the risk of escalation here. But the polling does suggest that the best way to cure Ukraine fatigue is to convince Western electorates that Ukraine is indeed winning, and that their aid makes a difference. With things like this... Con Isn't that crazy, man? Isn't the world crazy? You, you, met, you remember February last year when the news came that Ukraine is being invaded, and you were like, whoa, what? That's kind of scary. They're probably gonna die in three days, right? And now they push them back, bro. And they're holding. No one believed in that shit, man. And that's how history is written, man. That's that's how crazy the world is, man. And till this day, I gotta say, whatever you think about Ukraine, whatever you, however this is gonna end, you gotta show respect on these people. And history is gonna put respect on these people. What the Ukrainians have done there is is immense. A hundred, lots of people died. I'm very sad for them. And they, these guys will be echoed in history for what they did. We live in a time and age where, especially us Westerners, we just blah, 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 blah. Twitter, Instagram, our little forums, our little groups in the pub. Blah, 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 blah. No one does anything. Just blah, blah, blah. These people had to put a, pick up a weapon and defend their fucking country, man. Something that luckily none of us had to ever go through or never has to go through. Um, and they, they, they didn't have no more blah, blah, blah. They had real life knocking at their door, man. For that, I respect these people. Continuing the into 2023, died, it's easy to feel that the world is an increasingly unsafe place. Fortunately, when it comes to your personal life and digital safety, NordVPN. NordVPN. Interesting video, interesting video. What are you still doing here, mate? Jeez. Well, if you want to see more, click these videos. Have fun. Looking good, boy.